So my name is Matthew Cabraja and I'm a varsity swimmer for University of Toronto. So I always grew up in, in Vaughan, just north of Toronto, for all my life before. Um, and that's where I started swimming, doing lessons kind of with the city and like everyone else does, starting out from, from nothing, um, kind of swimming in the little pool and getting up to the levels and earning all my little badges and things. And once I kind of finished up that, my sister, who's two years older than me, got into competitive first. Um, and I kind of watched her compete for, for a couple years. And the funniest story is that I remember vividly telling my parents that I never wanted to be a competitive swimmer. <laughs> um, so when things kind of turned around and I got the bug to swim competitively, I joined up with the same club that my sister was in that was in Vaughan. Um, and after, after that, I had to go through a couple surgeries vision-wise that then left me completely blind. And that also left us looking for a new club when our current club wouldn't take me back as a swimmer. So that kind of started the, the journey I've been on now to the, the club I was with for the past 10, 11 years before I came to the university here. We have coached other para-athletes in the past, so it wasn't something that can't be done or was, was unique or different to us, but it was a unique opportunity for us to be able to help the para-swimmers and, and help that movement forward. Swimming is really at the vanguard of doing that in new sports and, and even in the country to, to one extent, because we actually integrate the athletes into the program and into the workouts and into the meets, something that very few other sports are able to do. So we're quite proud of that in the sport of swimming, in the OUA and in new sports. I've always loved the University of Toronto. It's my dream program is the University of Toronto, like academics wise. What we've been told for many, many years by people that we trusted in, in kind of the para-swimming world was that varsity wasn't a possibility for para-swimmers. Um, just based off of the fact that it's, there wasn't anyone really doing it and that was kind of their indicator to say that it wasn't a possibility. So end of May I got my acceptance letter and accepted my offer to, to study at the University of Toronto without kind of having a clear plan for swimming. I just basically wrote an introduction email to Byron introducing myself and, um, and honestly those are, there was a, a couple nervous days between sending that email out and receiving a response but once I received the response it was, I don't even know how to describe it, it was, it was the most amazing email I've ever gotten in my life. Um, Byron was just willing to accept me onto the team and into, into the varsity um, experience at the University of Toronto and that was a huge, it was a game changer I think um, for, for not only me but for the wider Paris swimming community in general especially here in, in Canada um, that a varsity team was going to accept the swimmer onto their team um, and, and train me with everyone else so kind of that was the, the, the most amazing thing for us and as that September rolled around and I got started here on campus uh, swimming with the university it, it just seemed like you know everything was perfect you know we were going to train up Tokyo was moved a year so we had a year to prepare and get everything ready so we started training and I just felt right in in the water here at the university with the team and with the coaching and with Taylor and everything. When Matt contacted me, of course, the question that I ask all athletes, para-athletes or able-bodied is, what are your best times? You know, how, how good are you? Can you fit on the team? Can we make this thing work, right? And so uh, I knew right off the bat that he was on the sort of ID team by Swim Canada, that he was a potential Olympian, Paralympian. And as such, that meant that he was at a pretty high level. And that, that is an advantage because of two reasons. One, then the workouts are a little bit um, um, follow the pattern of what the other athletes, the able-bodied athletes are doing. And number two, the goals and the approach and the professionalism is also at a very high level. Level. And that's also something that I find that's very important for the athletes because so many of the athletes we have are at such a high level that they've got that expectation when they come to training, they're committed, they're going to do certain things, they're going to prepare properly, and we kind of want that from the athletes coming in. And I knew Matt was going to have all that under his belt because he's been part of that Swim Canada ID program now for a few years. We went off to Tokyo. That was kind of the out most eye opening experience is when I walked into the village and you know, it was kind of like, okay, this is, this is what we're doing now. This is, you know, what's going to happen. We're going we're gonna to swim as hard as we can. We're going to succeed in any way possible. You know, just swimming at the Paralympics itself is, is a success. Whether it's a good swim, a bad swim, just appearing there, putting yourself in that, in that pool is a success. On my debut, I made finals, which was unexpected for all of us. Um, and then, you know, we had two very good races after that. Just everything was lining up for 
the perfect race. I had a race on day 10, I had a five day gap, and then I just trained hard butterfly for those five days. And once I got in the water for day 10 finals, um, I, I was there. I was, you know, swimming, swimming my best race. I went the best time that morning. So everything was like lining up to be the most perfect thing in, in the world. Uh, and me and my coach knew we had time in the bag. You know, we had things that we could do better. Uh, so stepping up onto those blocks, I think I was going in sixth or seventh in the race. And I just knew that I, I could do better. Um, so I dove in. And my only goal in that race was to split a 29 second 50 fly and then turn around and come back. And I split the 29.99, so I, I got under that 30 mark on the split and, you know, turned it around and just raced it as hard as I could all the way back. You know, there was nothing left for me to, to accomplish after this. This is the last thing I needed to do for the next, you know, couple months. Um, if, if, they take me away, if they take me away on a stretcher, they were going to do that. <laughs> so I raced hard into, into the finish. Um, and I didn't know this racing it in the water because I couldn't see my competitors, but I was catching up to the guys in front of me. I was in fifth and I was catching up. Um, and we all touched the wall within a second. Uh, one guy went 105.2, one guy went 105.7, and I went 105.9. So I was seven tenths off of the podium. I mean, the goal when Matt joined the program was to get to the Paralympics. I mean, that's the height for uh, an able-bodied athlete to go to the Olympics, for a para-athlete to go to the Paralympics. I mean, that's it. That's the, that's the top of the mountain. And, uh, you know, he was able to achieve that um, after his first year here. So that was quite a coup. The question is, where do you go from there? Well, we've got an able-bodied athlete named Kylie Moss in the program for many years. And she, of course, went to her first Olympics, won a medal, and then broke world records. And, and did all sorts of things internationally and is still swimming internationally. So I would argue that that's the same goal for Matthew, is that he's got that one thing under his belt now. He's been to the Olympic Games, Paralympic Games, and he finished sixth. So the question is, can you move up? I mean, the goal is obviously to improve and get better, and he's trying hard, he's working hard. So, you know, the goal is to move up the ladder, see if you can move up to fifth, to fourth, to third, maybe win a medal at the next Paralympics. So, you know, those are the goals of down the road. There's a few years before the next Paralympics, but, you know, you've always got that in the back of your mind. There's a World Championship coming up this summer. So, you know, there, there are certain goals that Matt has, and he's going to try to, you know, try to improve. That's the goal. You want to improve yourself, and then you want to try to race the best in the world and see if you can move up that ladder.